Christian Parenting. Lots of teens and 20-somethings are asking a question. Why bother getting married? Join us as we talk about that today on Family Vision. Hi, my name is Millie Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Hi, this is Rob Reno with Visionary Family Ministries. Welcome back to Family Vision. It means the world to us that you take this time to be a part of our lives. In our last episode, I shared with you a conversation I had with Chris Brooks from Moody Radio. And we began to talk about the cultural battle that's taking place in regards to the family, God's institution of the family, this culture war that we're in. And today I wanted to continue uh, that conversation with Chris, and we're going to turn our attention to marriage. We're going to talk about God's purpose for marriage and really ask this big question that we're hearing a lot from teenagers, from young adults. Why bother getting married in the first place? A lot of young people, uh, myself included when I was a teenager, uh, had a front row seat to bad marriages. They are hopeless about marriage and family and even children. So I'm going to play this conversation that Chris and I had on that question. We're going to receive a, a heartfelt question from a caller and then go on to talk about how families can be intentional. Like what can we practically do to help our families grow in faith together during this year ahead? I got a burden for Gen Xers and millennials and everybody else who's listening. I love you just the same. Right. But let me just say this, Rob, I'm growing up and and I'm a young adult in the nineties. Right. And uh, one of the most popular shows out is a show called friends. Right. And what is interesting about this cultural phenomenon of friends is that there are uh, six people basically living in the same apartment building. None of them married. All of them detached from family life, seeming to have a ball. They're having the time of their lives, unmarried, no children, no family, deep family connection. They're just finding community among their friends, right? So my question to Rob Reno is, make the case for why marriage is good and valuable. Why should I even want to get married if I'm a Gen Xer or Millennials? Because the shows I'm seeing Everybody's having fun and nobody's having the bondage of perceived bondage of marriage or children. All right. Well, first of all, and in our church, we're preaching through this right now in 1 Corinthians 7. Uh, First of all, God calls some people to singleness Mm -hmm. and God calls them to serve him fully as a single person lifelong. And that person is a full believer, full member of the body. So singleness is not a curse. They, they they lack nothing. Jesus was single. We would never say he lacked something because he was single. That's right. But at the same time, and this is first Corinthians seven, God calls the vast majority people to marriage. And part of the piece that we're missing when you think about friends or you think about a lack of calling to marriage or understanding this is that we have lost what starts off in Genesis one is that the biggest impact you're going to make on the world is not just your life. Mm. It's the multi-generational ripple of your life. It's the children, the unborn grandchildren, the unborn great-grandchildren that that are going to come from you, and your life is going to be spent investing into them. This is God's plan to reach the world. Right in the beginning, he wants to fill the earth with his people. Well, he only made two of them. Yeah. How's the earth going to get filled with people? It's through marriage. It's through family. It's through welcoming children and grandchildren into the world. And so part of it is, again, you can be a Christian 25-year-old, and you're hearing sermons, and you're hearing messages about share your faith with your neighbor and live for the Lord in your workplace. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. But, but if unless God's called you to singleness, the greatest impact that you're going to have on this earth for Christ and for his kingdom yeah. is going to be through the multi-generational ripple That's of your beautiful. family. That's beautiful. Let me just say, as an apology to every millennial that's listening to us right now that has only heard the church say that we're against gay marriage and has not heard the church say all the beautiful and wonderful things that are a part of marriage God's way, let me apologize to you because marriage is absolutely beautiful. 
And I got married at 20 and I'm 40 now and I'm still just as excited about it. It meets your intimacy needs. It gives you this opportunity to have, uh, and you can meet intimacy needs in other ways. Again, singles can do it. But I will tell you there's a unique intimacy in marriage that is beautiful. It shapes you for God's purpose and and, and, and it shapes your character for Christ like nothing else. It gives you this opportunity for this multi-generational legacy. So all these things that you hear Rob and I talk about, I pray that if you've never heard them before, let me just tell you, marriage God's way is beautiful. Don't believe the hype. All of this ungodliness and wasting your youth and ungodly sin, it it, it looks good, but there's a price to pay, and, and it, it is fool's gold. I am so glad that I got a chance to get married young. And let me speak also to a little bit about my family experience. I come from a family filled with divorce. My father is divorced four times. My mother was his fourth wife. Uh, my mother came to Christ in during the marriage with my father. That was her second husband. After my parents' divorce, she's now in a godly marriage now. Um, and so we've got divorce just riddling our whole family tree. Yeah. My brother and I were the first two Christian men in our family because wow. of my mother's leading us to the Lord. We just have a, a legacy of divorce yeah, in yeah, our family. Yeah, yeah. And my mom had to, to lead us in a prayer of representative repentance. I remember praying with my mom, her leading me and my brother in this prayer, Lord, me and my brother, we are here as representatives of this messed up family tree. And God, we want to confess all the unbiblical divorce around us. And we want to ask through the wow. power of your Holy Spirit, that you break that curse and that you'd begin with us and then every generation coming forward from us would be marked by faithful, Christian, godly marriages. And my brother's in a lifelong wow. marriage and I'm in a lifelong marriage. That is absolutely beautiful. Let's try to sneak a call in here before a break. Uh, Savannah, who's been patiently listening to us in North Point, Florida. Hey, Savannah, I want to sneak you in before a break. Thank you for listening. What's your question? I know that the Bible says that we're supposed to multiply and be fruitful, but um, is it okay if we don't have kids? I love my life with my husband, and I'm not sure I can handle it. I I appreciate your honesty. Love your question. Uh, Rob, what's your answer to that? Uh, First of all, thanks for asking that question and the candor of it. I I think this whole subject of uh, welcoming children into our families is intensely personal. Okay, so you just asking that question means a lot to me. Uh, Honestly, I mean, you're calling, asking for advice. If I were giving you advice, I would encourage you to just begin uh, a daily prayer with your husband. And it goes something like this. God, give us uh, your heart for kids. God, give us your heart for kids. And I would just pray that prayer. Mm -hmm. I'd pray it for a month. I'd pray it for six months and see what the Lord begins to do uh, in in your heart on that subject. That's where I'd start. And you know, and there's so many different ways to serve children. I would say this. I think Rob is right. Having biological children is different than serving children and having a heart for children. You got to lay that before the Lord and may his will be done. But I would say at a bare minimum, what your husband, you and your husband, Savannah, want to do is to look for ways that you can bless the next generation. Our faith is never meant to be just for ourselves, but our faith is for the world. And our faith is for, and hopefully you can embrace this, it is the desire of it is to have a multi-generational legacy of faithfulness to God. You talked about uh, the home being a discipleship center. What does that look like practically? Again, I'm thinking about the person who wants to really do this, What does it look like? All right. Well, the scripture that absolutely transformed my life, our family, and and birthed Visionary Family Ministries is Deuteronomy chapter 6. Jesus says this is the most important commandment in the whole Bible. We call it the great commandment. Deuteronomy 6, 5 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. What we have there is like the two foundations of the Christian life, love for God, love for his word. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's where we're going to get attacked first and foremost. But right after the great commandment, God makes it practical. He says, okay, you want to love me? You want to love my word? Here's where you start. Next verse says, teach them diligently to your children. In other words, we got to have a multi-generational vision. And, well, okay, well, how, how do I do that? Next verse, talk about them when you sit at home. The two most critical ingredients, practically, for a Christian family to live this out 
are a few moments of family prayer and a few moments of family Bible reading. What you call family worship. Down through the centuries, it's been called family worship. Yes. Family worship. I talk to, uh, you know, Christian parents will say, well, of course I want my kids to have faith. You know, sure. And well, what's the plan? Well, the plan is an hour of Sunday school a week or an hour of youth group a week, or I send them to Christian school or whatever it is. But the critical ingredients for the Christian home, and this comes right from Deuteronomy 6, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Okay, Lord, I want to love you. What do I do? Open my book at home with your family. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what we encourage families to do is just start bumbling and stumbling forward with a little more prayer and a little more open Bible in the home. Maybe you pray at mealtime right now, uh, but you don't ever share prayer requests together. Give that a shot. Say, hey, is there any way we could pray for each other today? Or uh, what was the best part of your day today? High, low. Well, I had this, I had this. Well, who would pray and thank God for that? Well, what was the hardest part of your day today? Oh, man, I had this happen at school and all this. Well, how about we pray and ask God for help with that? A lot of parents we talk to, um, they just they feel real insecure about this whole idea of having spiritual conversations at home. Like you said, they didn't grow up in a family That's right. that did this. They say, well, what if my kids ask questions? I don't know what the answer is to. You know, th- this isn't seminary class at home. Yeah, that's right. This is just humbling ourselves before God, asking for his help, opening his book. Read a, read a psalm, read a parable, read yeah. a proverb. A proverb would be two lines. That, yeah. That's okay. Well, we, we, we have uh, little kids, right? So we have a children's Bible that uh, we'll read from. Uh, and, you know, typically it's, it's just my wife or myself with the kids at, at home. And, and let me just take a lot of pressure off. Don't expect these moments to be these uh, great moments where the clouds in heaven open up, right? This ray of sunshine comes beaming down on your house, the only house in the block, and and this deeply spiritual moment, right? Don't expect to hear, excuse me, celestial music, right, when you do this. The fact is, is that most nights, excuse me, uh, most nights when we do this, Our kids are jumping up and down on the bed. I'm telling them, sit down, pay attention, right? Uh, We we try to have prayer time in the morning. But what I do know, and these are the moments that bless me, Rob, is when I hear them tell me something they picked up or they learned in that moment where I felt like they weren't even paying attention. So I don't want parents to feel like all of these moments, you're going to have some sweet moments, but sometimes you're going to be wondering like, God, am I really getting through? Is there something deep spiritual happening here? And I kind of see it as uh, deposits in a bank account, right? You make those deposits and it doesn't seem deeply spiritual all the time, but there's going to be something of substance there as they grow older, they will look back on it and they'll remember mom and dad doing this. Here's what we're seeing with families all around the country. Every family's got our struggles. We've got financial struggles, in-law struggles, marriage struggles, sibling struggles, you name it. And, and what Christian families are doing is they're bringing two things to the table to deal with all those problems. And the two things they're bringing to the table are good intentions. Yeah. Most of my Christian friends, they mean well, they have good mm-hmm. intentions. And they're bringing willpower. They're, they're trying. They really are. They're trying to get along better. They're trying to have more peace in the home and less anger and all of this kind of stuff. But the root problem isn't human effort, Yes, that we just need to be better. We just need to try harder. We need God to change our hearts. Yes. We need God to renew our minds. And the only way that happens is when we humble ourselves before him in prayer, even if it's, you know, God, our family's a mess. I don't even know how to pray. Please help us. Yeah. What a great prayer that is. Yeah. Or kids, you know what? I'm just going to open up the Bible and read it. I, I, we may not understand everything that we read here. I just know we need a word from God today. Yeah. And let's, let's see what God has to say. Well, I hope that this conversation was an encouragement to you, a challenge to you, and a motivator to you to maybe take some steps forward with family worship in your own home, or to begin praying and going to the Lord about the possibilities of marriage in your life or welcoming children into your family. I wanted to invite you to connect with us on a couple of live events coming up in the Midwest. One of them is very soon, September 11th, 2022. We have our Fall Family Worship Night in Marengo, Illinois. This is for all the generations to come together, a perfect way to start out the new year, coming together for fun, fellowship, and a time of intergenerational worship. You can get all the information about that at visionaryfam.com slash fall. 
and our fall retreat, our visionary family weekend away, November 11 to 13, 2022 at the Kalahari Resort in Wisconsin Dells is going to be here before we know it. And we want to encourage you to register soon. Our negotiated discounted rates expire on September 11th. Doesn't mean you can't register after that date, but after that date, we can't guarantee the rates that we have negotiated. And I want you to get all the information about this incredible family weekend. It is an amazing water park. It is a incredible resort. But more than that, we are going to grow in our faith and grow in our family relationships. November 11 to 13, 2022. Get all the information at visionaryfam.com slash retreat, or you'll find that information right on our homepage. As always, we want to hear from you. Want to hear your questions and your comments and your thoughts and prayer needs for your family. You can reach us at podcast at visionaryfam.com, podcast at visionaryfam.com. And if you'd like to do a deep dive into some of these questions on marriage, why bother getting married? How do Christians wrestle with this very personal and difficult question of, uh, of welcoming children? You know, how many, how soon, all of those things that people wrestle with. I would encourage you to get a hold of Amy's and my book, Visionary Marriage. Visionary Marriage. You can get it wherever you buy your books and, of course, on our web store at visionaryfam.com. We also have some 10 packs available uh, on our website if you want to do that study with some other couples. But it's a deep dive into the scriptures. What is God's vision and purpose for marriage? Uh, We also share about all the ups and downs of our marriage journey, and there have been a lot of them. Uh, God's grace and God's mercy is holding us together as we keep His vision and His purpose for marriage center stage. So again, thank you all for being a part of this, and we look forward to our next time with you on Family Vision.